Hello everyone. Today we are going to design a axially loaded short circular column. Let us read the question and write the given data. Design a circular column of diameter 400 mm. So the diameter D is given as 400 mm to support a axial load of 1000 kN. The load P is given as 1000 kN. The column has an unsupported length of 3 meter and is effectively held in position at both the ends but not restrained against rotation. The unsupported length of the column is given as 3 meter. We can convert that into millimeter. Adopt M20 grade concrete and FE 415 bars. FCK is 20 and FI is 415. First, we have to find the effective length. We have to open the code book IS 456, page number 94. In the question, it is given that the column is effectively held in position at both the ends but not restrained against rotation. So, we have to select this condition. The formula to find the effective length is 1L. So, the effective length LE will be equal to the unsupported length L which is 3000 mm. Now we have to check if the column is short or slender. We have to open this code book. Page number 41. A compression member may be considered a short when both the slenderness ratios are less than 12. In the circular column, there is only one dimension that is the diameter D. So, there will be only one slenderness ratio that is effective length upon the diameter 3000 upon 400 we will get 7.5 it is less than 12 so it is a short column. Now we are going to find the minimum eccentricity. Let us open this code book page number 42. All columns shall be designed for minimum eccentricity equal to the unsupported length of the column upon 500 plus lateral dimensions upon 30 subject to a minimum of 20 mm. The unsupported length is 3000 and the lateral dimension is the diameter D. When we calculate this, we will get 19.33 which is less than 20. From these two, we have to select the maximum value 20 is the maximum value, so the minimum eccentricity is 20 mm. In the short axially loaded columns, to find the area of the longitudinal reinforcement, we can use this formula, but there is one condition. The minimum eccentricity as per 25.4 does not exceed 0 0.05 times the lateral dimension. Our lateral dimension is the diameter which is 400, 0 0.05 into 400 we will get 20. So the minimum eccentricity does not exceed 0 0.05 times the lateral dimension because both are same. In this case the column may be treated as actually loaded column. Now let us find the factored load PU. The formula is 1.5 P. The value of P is 1000. 1.5 into 1000 we will get 1500 kN. Now using this formula we can find the area of the longitudinal steel ASC. We can find the grass area. We know that it is a circular column. The formula to find the area is 5 into D square upon 4. Here the diameter is 400. For the gross area we will get this. We know that the gross area AG is equal to area of the concrete plus area of the longitudinal reinforcement. So AC will be AG minus ASC. In this formula let us apply the values. Finally for ASC we will get 1831.85 mm square. 
Let us open this code book, page number 48. This class states that the cross-sectional area of longitudinal reinforcement shall be not less than 0.8% and not more than 6% of the gross cross-sectional area. Let us find the percentage of steel which is ASC upon AG into 100. For the percentage of steel, we will get 1.46 percentage. 1.46 is between 0.8 and 6. So it is safe. Now let us use trial and error method and find the number of the bars and the diameter of the bars. When we do that, we should get approximately equal to and a little more than this area. When we calculate this, we will get 1884.85 mm square, which is approximately equal to and a little more than this area. You can try with the different numbers and with the different diameters, but it should be according to these conditions. Let us open this book, page number 48. The minimum number of longitudinal bars provided in a column shall be 4 in rectangular columns and 6 in circular columns. Our column is circular, so we need minimum number of 6 bars. We have also provided 6 bars, so it is safe. The bars shall not be less than 12 mm in diameter. We have kept our bars as 20 mm. So here also it is safe. Now let us design the lateral ties. First let us design the diameter of lateral ties. Let us open this book page number 49. The diameter of the lateral ties shall be not less than one fourth of the diameter of the largest longitudinal bar and in no case less than 6 mm. In this book 6 mm is mistyped as 16 mm. In this design, we have the longitudinal bars. All of them have the diameter of 20 mm. 20 upon 4, we will get 5 mm. Also, we know that in no case, the diameter of lateral ties should not be less than 6 mm. The diameter of lateral ties should not be less than these two. In this case, let us keep the diameter of lateral ties as 8 mm. Now let us find the pitch. The pitch of the transverse reinforcement shall be not more than the least of the following distances. The least lateral dimension of the compression member. In this design, there is only one lateral dimension that is the diameter which is 400 mm. 16 times the smallest diameter of the longitudinal reinforcement bar to be tied. In this design, we have the longitudinal bars. All of them have the same diameter, 20 mm. 16 into 20, we will get 320. The third one is 300 mm. From these three, we have to select the smallest one, that is 300 mm. So keep the diameter of the lateral ties as 8 mm with the spacing of 300 mm. Here you can see the cross section. Let us keep the clear cover as 40 mm. Now we are going to end this session. Thank you for watching this video.